Good morning. Happy Monday. I want you, for the sake of this presentation, to imagine that you are students. And uh, tomorrow, you are all going to be taking the Park English Language Arts Literacy Assessment. Um, but you might think that today, therefore, we'll be doing some test prep, we'll be reviewing. Uh, but no, we're not going to. And I'm going to pick up right where Jackie left off. Today is like any other day. What are you doing in class? You're reading high quality texts. You're talking about it. You're discussing it. You're analyzing it. And you're writing about it. There's no drill and kill. And actually, drill and kill won't help because the kind of preparation for this test is teachers in their classrooms doing good instruction. And that is a huge difference. So now imagine, as students, that your results actually matter. They're going to tell you how you're doing, not just in the moment, but on your pathway to college and career readiness. They'll also give you a score at high school that you can take and use to place you directly into credit-bearing courses and reduce the number of total tests you'll take. So you don't have to take a placement test when you get on campus. Now imagine that the tests are given on computer, and they have lots of cool functionality, and they actually just might be fun. I'm going to give you a line of sight into those tests, and we're going to take a test question. Um, but you don't need your number two pencils, because they're going to be done on the computer. Um, I'm going to start first with a typical item from a typical test. This is a 10th grade item. Um, and it asks kids to write a letter to the head of the cafeteria, basically explaining um, some new additions to the menu, proposing some additions, additions and, and offering reasons. So it has some value. It asks kids to write, first of all, very important. It asks kids to make an argument, and it asks kids to give some reasons. But it doesn't actually ask kids to use text to read or to use evidence from those texts. So now look at a park item. This is a very different kind of item. It actually invites kids to read two pieces, one, the Declaration of Independence, two, a piece uh, by Patrick Henry, and to watch a video. Uh, then a very different kind of task comes forward. Uh, kids are asked to use evidence from those texts that they've just read, read to write a piece about the notion of government. Uh, so the student has to be prepared to use evidence directly from those texts to write uh, so that they'll be prepared when they go to college and their professor asks them to do more than write about school cafeteria lunches. And when their future boss asks them to actually uh, do some research and analyze that research and report on a topic, they'll have the skills they need. So what's the key difference here? It's text dependency. Uh, text dependency means that questions actually focus on the text and require evidence from those texts. That's very different from the first item that you saw. Um, and here are some other kinds of items. On the left, you'll see uh, some items that ask students to talk about their personal experiences or their personal opinions. That's fine, but it's not text dependent. On the right, you'll see different kinds of items where you actually have kids read uh, what makes Casey's experiences at bat humorous after they've read that passage, and what can you infer from King's letter about the letter that he received while he was in the Birmingham jail. Two very different kinds of questions that ask you to read something, write about it, back up your responses, and actually to think, wow. As a former English teacher, that's the kind of item I would have wanted my kid to do. Um, and it's really, really powerful if you think about the skills that that gives a kid. Hundreds of educators, thousands of educators, have been involved in reviewing park items. Every item has had over 30 sets of eyes on it. So we're really shifting the way that tests are, the tests look, and shifting the way that they're developed. OK, now everyone. Imagine you're a fourth grade student and you're taking a math test. I purposely cho chose fourth grade math um, to do both you and me a favor. Um, so I didn't choose a high school math problem. Um, all right, so this asks, I'm sorry if you can't read it, there are a bunch of stickers, some are ladybugs, some are stars, some are hearts, and it basically asks students to identify what fraction of stickers are hearts out of the total number. Um, so it's fairly easy, straightforward question. You divide the number of heart stickers by the number of total stickers. Um, it's a ratio fraction problem, and it's fairly procedural. All right, now I'm going to jump you into a park fourth grade item. So there are three parts to this item. I'm going to show them sequentially. Part A is pretty similar to the last item that you saw. Um, it asks kids to identify uh, fractions, know that those fractions are actually numbers, and place them on the number line. There's two. There's three quarters and five sixths. So they have to independently put them on the number line. So it's a little more interactive. Uh, they've actually got to do something and utilize the technology. And they're not just selecting uh, from a multiple choice question. In part B, students are asked to actually compare those values, asked which fraction is larger, and asked to explain why. 
And in part C, students have to under, explain their understanding and create a new fraction that's between five six and three halves. So they've done four things. Uh, they've been, done a procedure, they've demonstrated understanding of concepts, they've applied that understanding, and they've explained. So this is a complex unfolding task. Uh, you can't drill uh, for this, and you can't memorize all of the fractions between three halves and five Six. So it's a really good illustration of the way that instruction is the best preparation for this um, kind of test. As with Smarter Balance, Park has numerous accessibility features because why should great items be only um, accessible to a few? Uh, so there are a lot of interesting tools, the highlighter, the line reader, the magnifier, they're available to, most of them are available to all kids. And the technology give kids, gives kids a lot of autonomy and it allows them to drive their own experience, um, which really changes the test taking experience for them. So kids are not gonna be doing this anymore. Uh, many of you remember that well. Um, and testing hopefully won't feel like this. Now, uh, you'll note this is about a TCAP item since we are in the great state of Tennessee. But the point is that Park and Smarter Balance don't have a monopoly or won't have a monopoly on student misery around test taking, but it really doesn't have to feel like this. So in the remainder of my time, I wanna take a step back. You all are education reporters and you're hearing a lot and talking a lot uh, about testing, the uses and purposes of testing. And frankly, there's questions about whether uh, there should be testing at all. Um, but I wanna say that this is not a choice between tests or no tests. That's not the choice in front of us. The choice is between a current system that um, really measures a pretty narrow set of knowledge and skills and a new vision of higher quality tests that measure where students are in their pathway to college and career readiness, provides equity and access for all kids, um, actually provides a meaningful score that will be useful uh, when kids go into credit bearing courses, changes the paradigm around test preparation, and actually makes sure that testing isn't a separate event, but it's embedded and connected to the work that teachers do every day in their classroom. Thank you.